Hello and welcome to this Android programming tutorial. Sorry for being for not uploading anything during the last two three weeks because I, like I've been extremely busy with school works and internship season is on its peak. But oh well, we're back on track and let's hope if everything goes well. Today I'm going to cover how to use progress bars in Android. It's just those bars that keep filling themselves as you do some processing, just to show the user your app didn't crash or just loading something that may take some time, or loading screens, for example. Okay, so let's start off by opening Eclipse. Here we are. Uh, we're gonna create a new file, new project oh my god under application project click next wanna name it progress bar Lassi Garcia and let's go with Android KitKat for the target it doesn't matter that much but still for the purpose of these tutorials we we won't use Android L till it actually comes out next and finish boom Let's create the project. Hopefully everything will work fine. Okay, I don't want to render it. I don't want to render it. Okay. So this time we're gonna start off with the with the XML file. So instead of graphical layout, just go here. While it loads, we're gonna go to I copied the code because otherwise I'm going to spend half the tutorial typing the user interface. It's just this, I'm gonna go over it, don't worry. Uh, okay. This is your relative layout, you don't really need to change anything here. Now, we have a text view. This is just going to show the, it's, it's going to show the progress in numbers, 71 out of 100, 72 and so on. Nothing special here, we've already done it. The button, same stuff. We did we did in a previous tutorial. Now the progress bar, this is what it's important. Normal ID, here the style. Usually by default the progress bar is going to be a circle that spins around. If you do this, it's going to be a horizontal bar, like this one, that get get that gets filled with blue in this case. Width, height, align parent, center, margin, doesn't really matter. That's where you want to position it in the relative layout. Now, in the terminate, this is interesting. Right now it's false, and it's going. To, you should set it to false whenever you know how much process you're going to do. If you don't, let's set it to true so you, I can explain how it works. Here you're gonna have this bar that just keep moving, so you want to be so it will keep going until the process is done. But if you know you're going to do like one to a hundred, you set it to false. Max is the maximum value, so instead of in this case it's 100, minimum height and minimum y width doesn't really matter for this case, and progress we're gonna go one by one, one unit at a time. Now in the main activity, uh, first we have to instantiate our user interface objects, so private progress bar, progress bar, private button, I missed all this my button private int progress status we initialize it to zero uh, private text view text view private handler handler equals new handler so the only thing that's new here is the handler and the progress status that is from 1 to 100 is going to indicate our progress and the handler is used to modify our progress bar. Command shift O or control shift O to fix your imports. Sometimes you may have multiple actions and it will ask you. Uh, okay. So first let's find our user interface objects. So progress bar equals progress bar. We have to cast a view to a progress bar. Find view by id r dot id dot my progress bar uh, now a text view in our button 
equals text view find view by id r dot id dot my text view don't worry about Eclipse generate you here the thing is that you haven't compiled your project yet and because Eclipse is very slow at compiling it it doesn't know that those variables actually exist they do if you've done everything right it's fine don't listen to Eclipse in this case but we need to do this I was thinking that maybe if someone from Google is watching this uh, it would be really nice if we have a way to instantiate our I mean if our user interface objects get instantiated automatically so we don't have to do this tedious step of finding the ID and like the name of the variable could just be the, the ID but anyways my button dot set on click listener new view dot on click listener we've done this before in a previous tutorial is just how to use a button and record when it gets clicked. So view B. What it's going to do, our progress bar is going to start when we press the button. So progress status is set to zero then. Ah, there. New thread. This is the interesting part. New runnable. Alright, you're not familiar with multi threading. This might be a bit weird. But the idea is that you cannot. Uh, you shouldn't do this processing in your user interface probably you can't even if you want to and so we need to create a different thread in order to do that you just do like this new thread and you pass a runnable and in the runnable you have to override the run method and this is this would be what gets done like your processing in this case we're just gonna use a while loop progress status plus equal one because we're just gonna increase it by one handler post new runnable this keeps going public void run that's how you need to use the handler in this case so it's going to be the same bar that set progress progress status uh, text view that set text progress progress status uh, bar so out of progress bar that get max this is the 100 we specified earlier in the XML file I will need one there Okay, uh, so it's just a while loop. It goes a hundred times, increases one by one. In every step, it updates the progress bar and the text view with the progress status in the variable. The runnable needs. Oh, here, this is what was going on. The runnable, there. Uh, the handler just like sends the progress bar the information that we need to update. Now here we're gonna do a try catch because when you well one second a hundred when you do this thread.sleep you're stopping the 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 thread you're cur currently on in this case this one and you always should catch any possible exceptions that get raised with it by this interrupted exception e and we're just gonna print the stack trace it's just a lazy way of handling exceptions but it works uh, so we're sleeping point 0.1 second 100 milliseconds every every time we go so there's going to be point 0.1 seconds between 1, 2, 3 and so on uh, we go here, we close this, no, we close this, and we start the thread, because we have to start it. <laughs> and right here, we close it. Now this should be about it, uh, fix your imports, boom. This should be caps. 
and tet <laughs> so text and we're good this runs smoothly we don't need to change anything here really and yet again Eclipse just doesn't want to listen uh, so we're going to run this run as under application and let's launch the emulator and everything okay okay so after half an hour the emulator has launched here we have it let's unlock it Boom. Bam. Here's our app. So let's hope this works. Start progress. Boom, 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 boom. Now my computer is actually going slow, so this is going to be that case where it's not actually 100 milliseconds every step, but whatever. There. And we can run it again. Isn't that cool? Well, you can keep try, keep exploring like the different options you can use with the with this progress bar. Or you can use the circle, or you can just sit in the, and determine whatever you want. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you're liking this series, and hope to see you next time.